Okay, next we're gonna record some audio in Reaper. We'll make a new track by double clicking. We'll give it a name. I'm gonna record a guitar, name it acoustic guitar. And next we're gonna set the input, which is something I haven't showed you yet. Right over here, here's where we set the input based on our hardware audio interface. The one you have connected to your computer. Click it, and we can choose between mono, stereo input, MIDI, if we're recording some MIDI, or none. We're gonna do mono. I have a microphone on my acoustic guitar, and it's plugged into input three on my audio interface. So I'm gonna choose input three. Now it's a good idea to set up your inputs with names. This way you know where everything's plugged in. And we can do that in our preferences. If we go to audio, right down here is where we can choose channel naming or mapping. We'll turn it on here for the inputs and here for the outputs, and then we can name them right here. Now my interface has 16 inputs. Yours might have more or less, but right here we can change the name of what's plugged in. So on input three, I have the acoustic guitar mic. So I'll name it that, hit okay. This way it makes it easier when we go over here to see what's plugged into that input. Instead of generic inputs, like 1 through 16, I could choose the acoustic guitar mic. So now that microphone is plugged into this track. So now we're ready to record. If we go up here, we could turn on the metronome. This way we could stay in time with the tempo. Now let's put the track into record, right here. You want to set your level on your interface, so your signal is about 75% of the way up, as you'll see. We're going to record by hitting this button down here, or just hitting the keystroke I showed you earlier. Control R on the PC, or Command R on the Mac, and it goes into record. And we can hear the click track. But if you notice, we're not hearing the guitar. We're just hearing the click. But we see the level right here, and it records it. We're just not hearing it as it's being recorded. That's because we haven't chosen a monitoring mode. And we can do that over here. This button, if we right click it, there's a few options here. It defaults to being off, so we're not going to hear the guitar while we're recording. This is set that way in case you're monitoring through the software that came with your interface for direct monitoring or through an analog console. But if you want to hear it through the software or through Reaper, we want to turn it on here. And one of the options is monitor input. So if we choose this, let's delete this. Now we'll hear the guitar as we're recording it. That's a lot better. Now in this mode, we're gonna hear it even if we don't record it. So if I delete this and just hit play, and the guitar player plays along, we still hear it even though we're not in record. And that's how this mode works. Monitor input, but there's another monitoring mode that's pretty useful too. This one right here. Monitor input, tape auto style. If we choose this, now if we go into play, but not record, we still see signal as he's playing, but we're not hearing it. Because with tape auto style, we only hear it if we're in record which is really useful for punching. So in this mode, we'll hear it every time we're in record. So let's put it in record. Now if I punch out, we don't hear it. But if we punch back in, we hear it again. So it's a good mode to use when we're punching in and punching out, as we only hear what's being recorded when you punch in. It'll make more sense if we actually do it. So let's do that. Let's delete all this. Now let's say we're not happy with this section right here, from bar four to bar six on that chord change. Let's say we want to fix that or punch it in. We could do that using tape auto style. Now I should also mention, we don't have to right click this menu. We could just click this button and it switches the modes. 
When it's off like that, the monitoring is turned off. If we click it again, it looks like that. Monitoring is on. And if we click it one more time, it's tape auto style. See what says auto? This way we can tell what mode we're in just by looking. And we don't have to right click the menu, just click it. So now if we're in tape auto style, we could punch in and we're only gonna hear the input, what's playing live when we're punched in. The rest of the time, we're gonna hear what's already recorded, the stuff that's on the track. So let's punch in on bar four and punch out on bar six. And we could do that with our keystroke. So now we punched in just for that section. But if you notice, Reaper created a whole new take right down here, which allows us to choose which one's better. If we click this one, we're going to hear this take. And we'll hear the old take if we click this one. This is the way Reaper works by default. Now, if you don't prefer to work this way, you don't want to create a new take on each punch, we can change that. Go to the Options menu. On the new recording that overlaps existing items, we'll change it from new takes to trimming existing items behind new recording, or tape mode. If we choose that mode, let's undo this punch and do the punch again. This time, it's going to put the new item right on here. Turn the metronome back on. Now the audio is right in the same lane. It's not a separate take. And we can fix the edit just by going in here and adjusting it. Hold down shift and move it around. So we can create a better edit. This is a crossfade right here. But there's other punching modes to choose from. This is the normal mode, which we can choose in our options right here. Record mode, normal. The next option is time selection auto punch. Let's choose that instead. Now it's going to punch in based on a time selection. So let's create a time selection. Go up to our rule here and just drag from bar four to bar six. Now, if we click up here in our ruler, that's where it's going to play from. But it's going to punch in and out based on our time selection because we chose the mode time selection auto punch. So let's do that. And again, we're monitoring in tape auto style right here. All we got to do is hit record. We don't have to punch in. Reaper's going to do that based on our time selection for us. Punches in, and then it punches out. And then we can fix this punch, zoom in, and we can adjust our punch right here. Hold down shift, and it moves the crossfade earlier or later. And the same thing with the punch out. Go over here and zoom out. And we can adjust our punch just like this. Let's hear that back. Sounds pretty good. Now we could also punch based on selected items. So if we have an item that's already cut up, like this one, we could punch based on that item. Go to Options and choose Record Mode Auto Punch Selected Items. Now Reaper's going to punch in based on this item. And the benefit of this is we could do more punches. Let's create another item by splitting right here, hit S, and hit S over here. And then we could choose those items. Now we can't do it with Shift, because if we hold down Shift, it's going to select all the items that are next to each other. But on the PC, if you hold down Control or the Mac, you hold down Command, we can click this one and then this one, and it's going to punch in and out just for those items. So it's a great way of punching more than one section on the fly. Let's click our ruler over here. That's where it's going to play from. And that's kind of important to do, because if you click over here, it's going to deselect those items. We don't want to do that. So it's better to click up in the ruler. Now we can punch in, and it's going to punch in just for those two items. It punches in. 
then it punches out, then it punches in again, and punches out again. And now we have two new items that were punched in. And again, we could tweak the punches right here. This one with a punch out. And the same for this one. And the punch out. So that should sound pretty seamless now. We don't even hear the punches. It sounds seamless. Now I should also mention, down over here on the record button, we could right click it to change the modes. If we right click right now, we're in record mode, auto punch selected items, but we could switch it here, back to the normal mode for manual punching. Notice the record button looks a bit different. Right click again for time selection auto punch, and the record button looks like this, or auto punch selected items, and the record button looks like this. It just gives us some visual feedback of what mode we're in. And I should also mention, as far as the monitoring modes and our inputs, we could change those defaults so every time we create a new track, it's set the way we like. So let's delete this and go to our preferences. If we go down over here to track send defaults under project, right over here, we could change the defaults for our new track. It defaults to input one, but we could change that right down here. We could change it to the acoustic guitar mic. We could change our monitoring mode right over here. It defaults to nothing. We could do monitor input or tape auto style. Let's choose that. Now, every time we create a new track, it's already going to be set that way, saving us that extra step. So if we make a new track, name it acoustic guitar. The input's already set to our acoustic guitar mic, and we're already in tape auto style. So we can go into record, and we're gonna hear the guitar as a recording. Again, it saves us a few extra steps. Now I should also mention, we can adjust how we name the audio. Right now it's naming it based on the track and a whole bunch of other numbers, which we can see in our preferences. If we go down to recording, we can change the name right here. Right now it's using wildcards, based on the track number, the track, the year, the month, the day, the hour, and the minute. That's what these numbers represent. But if you want to make it simpler, just change it. Delete this right here and choose some other wild cards, like the track, which is the track name. And now if we go into record, it's gonna name the media item based on the name of the track, acoustic guitar. Acoustic guitar four. Acoustic guitar five. And acoustic guitar six. So it's a bit simpler than the default. So anyway, that's recording audio in Reaper. Let's move on and do some editing. Let's go. Thank mm -hmm. you.